مرحبا واهلا وسهلا فيكم. Welcome to another episode of Arabic phrases. In today's episode, we'll be looking at the most untranslatable Arabic phrases. Most of these cultural phrases are used on a daily basis. So they're very great insight to Arabic and hopefully you have a great fun learning some of them and don't forget to practice them. Without further ado, let's start. Our first phrase is يُؤْبُرْنِي 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 Okay, so whilst this word, as you can see on the screen, it means you bury me or I wish you bury me. So the concept and the meaning goes far deeper than that and no pun is intended. And the overall meaning of your urni means that you wish and you hope that your loved one will outlive because of how unbearable and hard and harsh and sad it would be to live without them. It's a gorgeous and painful expression of desire to spare yourself a painful life without the person you love. So probably this is something you would never encounter or use uh, in English or would use it on a daily basis, let's say for example. But this is quite the term that's used by uh, grandmas, um, used a lot by grandparents and mothers. We use it to express... Uh, or say oh how the person how lovely the person is or how gorgeous they are and you adore them although it might sound a little bit cryptic however the overall translation is very loving and is something we use it actually on a daily basis i personally use it our second phrase is naiman 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 so this phrase uh, you would more likely to hear it if someone gets a shave or haircut or comes out of the shower it's a kind of a complimentary and a blessing uh, term where what you say is congrats on your new look or new haircut so it's a kind of a blessing and uh, sharing this uh, Lovely moment saying congratulations on your new look or the haircut or looking a lot fresher. Not meaning that you were smelling before, but that is the main meaning in Arabic. But that doesn't, again, that doesn't mean that, that you're telling the person, oh, you were smelling a little bit before and now you don't really smell. So that is not the meaning. It's just all it means is it says congratulations on your fresher or cleaner look. But mainly this phrase is used when men, they have um, a haircut or uh, a shave and his pals will uh, slap him on the back saying, oh, you know, Naiman, Naiman, and they use this term. And the response to that, you would say, Allah. Yinam alek, Allah yinam alek, if you're replying to masculine, and Allah yinam aleki, if you are replying to feminine or the person that, uh, who greeted you or congratulated you is a feminine. Great. So that was our phrase is naiman. Naiman. Our third phrase is ala rasi, is combined of two components, ala, which means on, and rasi, which means on my head. So again, the literal translation for it, it means on my head. This is one of the most commonly used Arabic phrases uh, when someone asks you uh, for something or demands something. So for example, if a friend, um, uh, if a friend says, you know, I would like you to give me a ride or take me to this party or uh, lend me your bike or your car. So the response would be ala rasi. It's a kind of saying anything for you or I will do anything for you or it means you are welcome. So our phrase, our third phrase is ala rasi. Our next phrase is kil sinew anta salam. Kil sinew anta salam if you're talking to a masculine. And kil sinew inti salme if you're talking to feminine. So this phrase is used um, a lot and commonly used uh, in birthdays or religious holidays like Easter, Ramadan, Eid. And it translates, I w uh, wish to see you every year safe and peaceful. And of course, we... Uh, there is nothing similar in English. Of course, in English, we don't have uh, a such thing uh, or something similar. Uh, in English, obviously, we do have happy, uh, happy birth or happy new year or Merry Christmas. Uh, but we don't have anything similar to the phrase. And this is something could be used more frequently or commonly than these two phrases, as you see in the screen, which is happy birthday and Ramadan Kareem. 
So, كل سنة وانت سالم, if you're talking to a masculine, and كل سنة وانت سالمة, if you're talking to feminine. Our next phrase is وفر, and وفر as itself means to save, and وفرت if you're talking to a masculine, and وفرتي if you're talking to feminine. Though this is uh, a very old term and not commonly used these days, uh, as I recall, uh, my older brother or sister, uh, they would normally, uh, when we tend to eat something and they would say, you know, come and try and eat the food. And then when I refuse it, and they would use this term and it literally, and it translates to something like, fine, if you don't want to eat this food, great. That means it's more for me and saves me the trouble anyway. So that would be the translation for it. Uh, it's basically if someone is offering you the food and you say, oh, no, I don't want it. And the overall translation for what food it would be, that's more for me and you save me the trouble anyway. So, more for me to eat. Uh, I mean, I used to laugh when they would use to say it, uh, you know, to us, uh, before understanding, it probably was uh, a little bit meaner uh, by any means, but um, I don't think uh, any, any of them they meant it. And even if they did, that means I had more delicious food to eat uh, that my mom cooked. So this is the term, wafarat. Wafar, wafarat. Um, I think sometimes you would come across uh, people tend to use it, but maybe not everybody uses it. So wafar, wafarat if you're talking to masculine, and wafarti if you're talking to feminine. Our final phrase is fadak. Fadak if you're talking to masculine, and fadaki if you're talking to feminine. So fadak is one of these terms uh, which lets my childhood flood back uh, as always i remember uh, when i would go and lose a toy or a thing uh, and then my dad uh, would come and smile and say oh fadak and the guilt and the sadness of losing that toy would vanish and it literally means and somehow the translation if that makes sense to you it means i wish this loss i wish the loss of this toy could be a deterrent to push away or keep you away from the evil and it may come back one day later on and make you receive it in a different form and make you get it back again on a different form that's the translation for fadak fadak so we would use it or my dad would say it or my mum would say it fadak it means when you lose a toy or when you lose something valuable and they would say you know i wish i hope it goes away to deter any evil or any bad things to stay away to, to, to keep or stay away from you and uh, reverse it to become good and you receive it one day in a different form so this is the translation of fadak and fadaki thank you very much for watching this episode i hope you really enjoyed it and found it helpful and a great insight for you to enter arabic and hopefully you will get the chance to practice them with your family and your loved ones Till next time, keep well and ma salama. Thank you.